What is Hatch and Tuggy people? So many tough coming at you today with the Season 5 of the GBA Pittsburgh Piratita Draft Analysis. And today, we're just me going briefly over what we drafted this season. Don't you think, oh my god, Tup, I thought you died. It's been so long and we've been seeing everybody else's draft analysis up but yours. Well, today, we're going to fix that problem. So we're going to get into the draft analysis. We had the overall first pick in the draft. And if you, excuse me, if you were watching the draft, I was actually there and made this pick live. Um, the stream is available on the GBA main channel. And what I did, I explained there, I was going to be 31 picks but before my next pick, so I needed something I could build my team around all the time. And that was something that I needed. I wanted a rapid spinner. I'm not a fan of defog at all. Because if I'm going to set rocks, I don't want to give them away to get rid of yours. I want to get rid of yours, and that's it. So I wanted a reliable rapid spinner. There's two of them in Tier 1. I wanted something that I could build a team around, something that could be offensive, something that could be maybe a little bit defensive if I wanted it to be. And this first Pokemon just filled so many slots, I couldn't pass up on it, and that was Exadrill. Now, Exadrill boasts a fairly modest 88 speed, but it's got 110 hit points, which everybody always forgets, and it's got that 135 base attack. Now, with fairies being so important in this season everyone's like oh you should draft the best fairy of all time clefable first i mean that's a solid first round pick and it, it would have been had i picked it but i'm not as fond of fairies as most people even though they are fantastic in the format um but i got exadrill and exadrill if the opportunity for the sand to make it back to me is a huge threat and standalone on itself is a big enough threat um, with things like Mold Breaker and its ability to just earthquake the pants off of everything with Mold Breaker. You don't have to worry about those pesky levitators, which a lot of teams have. And um, Ground Typing, which is fantastic in this league because it gives you that electric community. Rapid Spinner, it can Stealth Rock, I can throw a Choice Band on this thing, I can throw a Scarf on this thing. I can do so many different things with Exadrill. Access to Rapid Spin. It can do the Quake Edge combo, so it's got that excellent coverage between Earthquake and Stone Edge, even though Stone Edge isn't Stab. It's very good. It's also got Rock Slide if I want to go with a little bit less power and a little bit more accuracy. Um, this thing's a fantastic Life Orb user. And like I said, if I can get the sand, this thing is just something that everyone has to prepare for. So it was 31 picks before my next pick. And when I got Exadrill, I knew that if it made it back to me, I wanted a Pokemon that didn't get drafted last season. I don't think it got drafted in the D League either. <clears throat> And that's one of my personal favorite of the Piximons, which are the Pokemon with base 100 stats up and down, and that is Celebi. And Celebi, I think, is really overlooked in this format. Hard-hitting grass types are important to any team, because almost every single team in the format has a bulky water type, and a lot of them are water ground types. So having a super effective four times stab grass attack just fantastic. Not to mention with those base 100 stats, even though knockoff is a thing, even though U-turn is the same thing, Celebi takes hits really, really well. It get I can do a sub-seed combo, which is one of my favorite things to do with good grass types. Um, it gets access to Leaf Storm, I, it can Nasty Plot, it can Sword Stance, and it has moves on both sides of the spectrum to abuse both of those setups. So, I mean, it's a very, very versatile mod. It gets Recover. So, I mean, it can do lots of things. It doesn't have to be a dedicated wall. It can be an attacker. It can be a special attacker. It can be so many different things. So I was really happy to get Celebi, and when I got Celebi, I knew I wanted to start building a solid fire, water, grass core. So I was looking at what was left, and I was like, I'm taking this before it disappears, because it's one, of, in my opinion, one of the best fire types 
in the format. And that was Arcanine, and Arcanine is just fantastic. That was my uh, first wheel pick. For those of you who don't know what snake format is, wheel pick is, I was the first pick. And the way the snake format goes, it goes from first to last, then round two, it goes from last to first. Well, it, between round two and three, I had the very last pick and then the very first pick. So I picked back to back, and that's what's known as the wheel pick. And I really wanted to start this Firewater Grass Core and I was looking at water types and I was looking at fire types and I knew if I didn't grab what I grabbed right now it might evade me and that was Arcanine um, although not the best recovery when the sand is up um, I'm not gonna have sand every single week and sand isn't gonna be up all the time if I even have it so um, unfortunately Hippowdon got picked before it made it back to me in this uh, set of rounds but I got Arcanine, Arcanine all the moves it has, abusing of street, uh, extreme speed, uh, can be bulky, it can intimidate, it's got flash fire, it's just a fantastic mon in this format. And I'm really looking forward to using it, and I'm looking forward to abusing the crap out of it. I mean, it's got good attack, good special attack, relatively good speed. I mean, 95 speed is nothing to scoff at. 110 attack, 100 special attack. I mean, its lowest stats are 80, and that's its defenses, and that is not bad at all. So, Arcanine, I was really looking forward to adding it. Now, this next Mon, in my opinion, is the one I've been criticized the most for, just because people, and um, it was said during the draft, and in the power rankings, that Machamp was drafted too soon. Now, I wanted a really, really good fighting type, and of course, Conkledur fell quick, because it, in my opinion, is the best fighting type in the format. But, I saw my homeboy Machamp just chilling down there in Tier 3, and I was like, I'm taking you before you disappear. Now, didn't get drafted last season. A lot of the mons I picked didn't get drafted last season, which was just, whew, to me. So... We got a lot of things that people might not n know what to expect. So, yeah, um, got Machamp. I love dynamic punching Machamp. No guard is such a fantastic villain. Granted, your opponents aren't going to miss you, but dynamic punch hitting all the time, coming off a stab 130 base attack. Fantastic. Guaranteed to confuse. 100 base power. Stab. So good. And then it's got things to complement it like Stone Edge. It's got Payback. It's got Earthquake if I want it. I can throw a Fire Blast on there if I need it to take out some things. My champ is just so good and I like it. Now this was my second set of the wheel picks and I wanted to grab this before it disappeared. And that was the final piece of my Firewater Grass core. And that was Jellicent. Now, Jellicent didn't get drafted last season either. And I couldn't believe it because this thing is so good. It's got good abilities and Cursed Body. It's got Water Absorb. So two of my walls in the core that I've built have instant immunities based on their abilities. I mean, unless you're playing Wall Breaker Hacks Wrist, which we will this season. But aside from that, we got the best Mold Breaker in the game, in my opinion. But, I mean, we got Jellicent, who can take water hits for days. So, I mean, we don't got to be worried about those scalds. We got Celebi, who doesn't have to be worried about those scalds. Because even if he gets burned, it gets burned, it switches out with Natural Cure, and whoop, burn is gone. So we're not even worried about that. Jellicent's just one of those fantastic support mons. It's got Will-O-Wisp. I can drop a hex on it if I want. I mean, it's got Scald if I don't feel like using Will-O-Wisp. It's got Hydro Pump if I want to get crazy. Um, it's got Shadow Ball, and even though it's not the highest base special attack, which, I mean, is 85, which isn't terrible, but it's not good. It's mediocre. But, I mean, Shadow Balls from this thing are going to do enough work, and if I can get a Burn and Hex, even better. Um, it's got that 105 base special special defense, my apologies, and 100 based hit points. So, I mean, this thing, I believe, is underestimated, and I'm glad I grabbed it when I did, because if I'm not mistaken, A-Drive would have taken it from me had I not. Now, I got the core I want. I've got some fairly 
Bokemons between Machamp, Arcanine, Celebi, and Jellicent, I wanted to start bringing the power. And I wanted to get my core before I started bringing my power hitters because there's power hitters in all the tiers as long as you pick them at the right time. And I knew this was the time to start doing that. So with my sixth round pick, I picked Ambipom. And Ambipom did so much work for... S I almost said Slim Shady. For Shady, Slim Shady Penguin, last season that I was like... Ambipom has been one of my favorites since 4th gen when it came out. It was one of the first Pokemon I bred to have perfect eyes in that generation. And it was one of the first Pokemon I made legally competitive. I mean, I bred it myself, I ived it myself, and, well, I ived it through breeding, and then I evved it myself. And that was the first Pokemon I ever did that for competitively. And I was really glad it was still around when I wanted to pick up a really strong physical hitter. I mean, this thing's got speed. It's got 115 speed, so it's going to outspeed 90% of the Pokemon in the format. I mean, it is the fastest Pokemon on my team. So, I mean, it's got Technician Fake Out. It's got the old school U-turn all the goodness. I mean, the coverage on this thing is just fantastic. It, it gets gunk shot now. So, fairies, okay, bye. Yeah, so Ambipom, it's got base, I mean, it's only got base 100 attack, but it's got that technician, and fake out is nothing to scoff at. So yeah, um, also, technician boosts hidden powers if I want to run a special one, so wink wink, it gets nasty plot too. And I was analyzing my team at this point, and I'm like, I don't have an electric type yet. Let's see if we can find a hard hitting electric type that's still left. Excuse me, and I scanned and I scanned and I was like, nobody took Thunderous Incarnate yet. And Mega Mogwai had it last season, and I'm like, nobody took Thunderous Incarnate yet. Somebody took Thunderous Therian, which is actually my week one opponent, uh, Gubstacular in the Arizona Deoxys. And I was like, Thunderous Eye, what can we do with that? And I mean, the nasty plot set was banned in 5th gen for a reason. Because after a nasty plot, Focus Blast two shot Blissey. You heard me right. In fifth gen, this got banned because after a nasty plot, it two shot Blissey. Woof. So I mean, this thing's got Prankster. This thing has Defiant. This thing can hit from both sides of the spectrum. Let's take a look at its um, 115 base attack, 125 special attack and 111 speed. So again, one of the m more faster, one of the faster mons in the format, and I'm really looking forward to getting used to it. That prankster ability is going to help me drop T waves because as again, I as again, again, 115 is the fastest pokemon on my team, which isn't ridiculously fast compared to some of the things in the format. So being able to get a prankster T wave off on, you know, things that aren't Jolteon or Manectric or Mega Manectric is really going to be beneficial. Things like I'm going to be facing week one, namely Mega Alakazam, which outspeeds my entire team, but outspeeds some of my team with a what plus one boost. So if I could, uh, that Prankster T wave is really going to be nice in my back pocket. After that, I waited and um, round eight came around, and I needed to start filling holes. And this was literally. I had pretty much gone through my draft and gotten everything I wanted step by step by step, and this was the first Pokemon that I filled a hole with. Um, I realized I didn't really have any hard hitting, I didn't have a stab ice attacker, and ice moves are really good in this format. And I was like, well let me look around, I don't have a dragon type yet, I don't have a fairy type yet, so I don't have a dragon fairy steel uh, core, so I was like, well maybe we can get one of those, and I looked around to see what was left. And I didn't have my Mega yet, and I was like, oh, Mega Charizard X is there, but I really don't want that on this team. I was really, I mean, Tyranitar base had been taken at this point. Mega Tyranitar was still sitting there, and I'm like, do I want Mega Tyranitar? Because I was looking at my Megas at this point, and I wanted Mega Tyranitar or Mega Aerodactyl. And I was trying to figure out which one was most beneficial for my team, but I realized that I think at this point only me... Gubstacular and Crimson Seabad had yet to pick our Megas, and I was like, I don't think either of those guys are going to want those two mons because they really don't fit to their team. 
So, I held off on picking my Mega, and I was like, Curum is sitting there, and I can get it at a really good value. It hits really hard on both sides. I mean, it's got 130 attack, it's got 130 special attack, and I mean, it's sitting at a respectable 95 speed. So, I mean, throw a choice scarf on this, throw a choice specs on this, run the subset, which no one even thinks about and just destroy faces with this thing. And I really look forward to using this and uh, racking up some kills because I really think this is probably, in my opinion, the best out-and-out -out wall breaker on my team, uh, standalone. And after that, I was like, okay, my only hazard removal, and this was my ninth round pick, is Exadrill, and it's the only thing I have with Rapid Spin. I'm like, okay, I need something that's going to help me with fighting types because at this point I have one, two, three fighting weaknesses out of eight mons. So that's almost half my team. So I'm like, okay, Crobat's gone. Crap, Crobat was so good last season and in the D League, I'm like, it's gone. So why not run Golbat? So I was like, okay, let's take a look at Golbat. And I took a look at it, and with the EV Alight, very respectable. I mean, it's still got that 90 speed, not blistering speed like Crobat, but for a wall and or support mon, very good. And I just looked at it, and I'm like, I think that really fits. I do. Um, it didn't add any more um, compounded weaknesses that it shared with many other things. I mean, it's weak to Psychic. Not much on my team is weak to Psychic outside of Machamp at this point. Um, I mean, Electric and Ice, but I mean, the team really spreads those weaknesses out well. And I mean, Golbat, just to have as a Defogger in my back pocket, if I need it, it can Roost, it can do all those fun things. So I was like, I really think for what I'm going for right now, Golbat is my best option at this point. Now it made it back to me, and I still hadn't picked my Mega, and at this point only Crimson Seabad hadn't picked his Mega. And he didn't pick it the ter going into the 10th round, so I was like, okay, I can pick whatever I want, because I get two picks, which are my last two picks, before I go into the end. So I was like, okay, I need something with good speed that can just lower the boom stick whenever I need it to. And I was like, something that kind of complements and goes with a team that can fill slots, te days that maybe I'm not bringing Exadrill, or days maybe I'm not bringing what Mega I'm going to be picking. And honestly, I would not have picked Archeops had I gone with Mega Aerodactyl, but because I realized how important and how much of a threat the sand made Exadrill by itself, now granted, I don't think I'm going to be sweeping teams with Exadrill. Let me preface that right now. But the threat of it being able to is too much to overlook in team preparation. Um, I think there's only one other team that can set a weather other than sand. And that's Fizzy Stardust, who got Mega Charizard Y. But Fizzy Stardust got regular Tyranitar, so there's a sand setter. And... Gym Leader Geo, who is in our division, who we will see twice, has Hippowdon, which is also a sand setter. So, I mean, having the sand looked really good at this point. I mean, a lot of my mons don't take as much damage. I mean, I've got Archops, I've got Mega Tyranitar, I've got Exadrill. So I've got three things. Granted, I'm probably not going to bring them all at once, but I mean... And just by the way I'm looking at it, I can make an old school Sandstorm team with this setup. I mean, I've got the bulky mons that cover the weaknesses that my rest of my team uh, suffer from. I've got some really fast mons who come in and just clean up after Sandstorm has ravaged some people's teams. And the residual damage from the Sandstorm and what I'm going to hopefully get up more frequently than I did last season, which was none, uh, Stealth Rocks. Um, I got quite a few rockers on my team this season, so I'm really looking forward to getting that up. I mean, I got <clears throat> Exadrill can set rocks, Celebi can set rocks, oh shoot. And um, I believe Megatarianatar and Archops can set rocks. Don't quote me on Archops, I don't know, but I have three solid rock setters who are probably going to be staples to my team, so I'm not really worried about not being able to get up rocks. 
So, yeah. Uh, picked Archeops, 110 speed, 140 attack. Now, granted, after Defeatist, that gets chopped way down. But, until it does, 140 base attack is nothing to laugh at. I mean, there's only one Pokemon on my team with a higher base attack than that, and that is Mega Tyranitar. So, I mean, that is just, I mean, Stone Edge be dropping like crazy from that thing and just going to be nailing things. And at 110 speed, possible late game sweeper. Just saying. And then with my last overall pick, I picked Mega Tyranitar, and it just made everything full circle. I started with Exadrill and I ended with Mega Tyranitar. Um, Mega Tyranitar is just fantastic in my opinion. Its base stat total is just disgusting. It has 700 total base stat. And I mean, it's got 100 base hit points, 164 attack, 150 base defense, 95 special attack, which isn't fantastic, but leaves room for running old sets that relied on Flamethrower, Fire Blast, Ice Beam, T-Bolt. Mega Tyranitar has fantastic coverage. And 120 base special defense, which I mean, you think about it, once it's boosted with the sand, I'm not going to be as worried about non-stab hidden power fighting as I would be any other way. So that's really good. And um, 71 base speed, which isn't the fastest thing on my team, but it's not the slowest. But I mean, Mega Tyranitar targets access to Dragon Dance. So I mean, boosting that already insane uh, regular attack as well as getting some speed up there. Really happy with the team. Now let's go down real quick since that was the draft. Let me check the time, see where we're at. Oh no, it's not giving us... Okay, that was 20 minutes. So we're going to do this real quick. We're going to get on my base stat total averages. Now, for the team, my average hit point total among my 11 Pokemon is 93. And that is really good. When you can get anywhere close to 100, that is just fantastic. So a lot of Pokemon have really crappy hit points. Now, this is the highest collective stat on my team, and that is a base attack. And that is an average of 115. And if I remember correctly, that is the highest in the league. And a lot of our stats are really far up there when compared to the rest of the league. So on paper, this team stacks up really well stat-wise. Um, our lowest overall stat is defense, which is 82, which I'm not really worried about because Will-O-Whispers and defensive mons. So, yep. Um, special attack is a 90 overall, but that's mostly because all of our really hard-hitting attackers have booty special attack, like Exadrill, like Machamp, like Ambipom, but that's okay. Then we're going to move on to our special defense, which is a, a total of 85 for average, and then our speed, which I think is second or third overall in the league which is um, an average of 90, which is really good compared to last season. Because I think we were like next to last speed-wise last season. And that was something I really worked hard to correct. Because just booty. But alright guys, this has been Old Man Tup's draft analysis. Let me know what you thought about my draft, what some of my highlights were, and what some of the mistakes you might have seen. Alright guys, this has been Old Man Tup. We will catch you on the flip side, and let's go Piratitas!